Thank you very much, uh, the organizers for the Africa Tech Summit for having me one more time again uh, this particular year during these challenging times to take you through our one year journey with uh, the regulatory sandbox. It is indeed my pleasure um, as an officer serving with the Capital Markets Authority in the Sandbox Review Committee to come to you again from the Capital Markets Authority, the award-winning authority. I want to report to you that we have, for the fourth year of the row, been awarded the most innovative capital markets regulated in Africa, underscoring our commitment to fostering innovation in the capital markets in the wider financial markets. This is a testament uh, to the strategic plan and the capital markets master plan commitment to having uh, us leverage technology across the capital markets value chain. If uh, you will remember, we issued the first mobile-based government uh, bond, retail bond, uh, dubbed the Emokiba, which was the first in the world. And then our country, Kenya, has been one of the greatest leaders in mobile-based share trading, mobile-based securities trading by mobile, mobile phones. This very two key innovations, among others, have made us to stand out among other African regulators in our role in fostering innovation in the capital markets. It is, uh, for me, it is the Africa Tech Summit then offers us the platform as regulators to hear out from other fellow policymakers, other regulators, other innovators on this important subject of how we can push uh, tech adoption in Africa and also globally for the betterment of humanity throughout all our initiatives. So I really much feel much delighted to be here and I hope during the course of this uh, summit we will be sharing uh, with each other, learning from each other, gleaning off insights that will better each of our work streams in whatever jurisdictions and country that we are in. I want then to take you straight to my presentation today, uh, I will highlight the role of regulatory sandboxes and then go straight to a brief highlight, a brief overview of the lessons that we have uh, gleaned over the past year. Now, one of uh, the key things that we note is that there are many regulatory approaches which have been applied by different countries across the world in fostering innovations in the financial markets. Now, I will speak about four of them and also add one more to this uh, particular uh, slide in question. And one of the things I would recommend to, uh, to you, my dear audience, is to look through uh, the CCAF, which is a Cambridge Alternative Finance Center, uh, research reports on fostering innovation, and also the World Bank reports, where you have a clear delineation of the different types of um, regulatory approaches to fostering innovation within uh, your respective jurisdictions. And I would bet that one out of all these jurisdictions, one out of these four types of regulatory approaches have been applied in your own country. Now, many regulators would apply test and learn approach when where ideas are cast under some test. And then under these tests, the regulators learn on how these tests are actually done, learn about how these products are undertaken, and then the key investor protection requirements are built into these uh, innovations before they are market ready. So a very good example is M-Pesa, which is a successful test and learn approach done in, in, in Kenya. Now most other regulators in regards to crypto all over the world have undertaken the wait and see approach, waiting for the natural evolution of this uh, new phenomena uh, around crypto and also other the adoption of emerging tech and its impact on the business model to see how it actually plays out before any formal regulation or uh, structured guidance is issued to the market in regard to that innovation. And then you have uh, jurisdictions which issue new license categories for particular kinds of innovations. So you have, when FinTech came to the fore, you had uh, the Swiss, um, uh, 
issuing a fintech specific fintech license to cover all types of fintech models uh, within the jurisdiction. And then you have innovation offices as, as one other uh, regulatory approach, which has been used by uh, very well, a very good example is the MAS Singapore and other countries which have utilized innovation offices in addition to other regulatory approaches. And for our case today is the regulatory sandbox. And if I discuss more or less about the regulatory sandbox, the aim of the capital markets regulator is to develop the market. And then one then would need a type of a regulatory approach which would enable us as a capital markets regulator to better our understand or first track our understanding of emerging tech, case in point, the likes of blockchain and AI. And then two, as a regulator, we need to make policies, our regulations, directives, circulars, based on actual evidence, based on some observable trends, based on experience, real-time experience. And then three, we need a structured, collaborative, coordinated approach among ourselves and our, market and our stakeholders, innovators, other policymakers, in a way that we can span innovation in a reasonable and in a balanced way while managing uh, the attendant risks. Enter the regulatory sandbox. Now, I mean, all of us, when we, uh, when we grew up in a different context, we used to enjoy our playtime. And during playtime, uh, you take your ball, play by the sand, go by the sea, play in an open field. And during playing time, it was simply as that, play time, where we'd all match up our strength, go out and test our own skills, uh, particularly, I love football, probably, uh, um, I don't know if you love netball. And then we'd, uh, for some time period, play out the game, and then there would be a result at the end of the day. Uh, so one team would be declared a winner, or one day would become declared a loser. So mimicking this, successful uh, kind of paradigm came the issue of sandboxing where experiments were conducted for a limited time scale life testing of different experiments and this idea now came through from the medical science and sciences field on experimentation of different test uh, subjects and the tech world took up this idea on on sandboxing and came up now incubation programs to try to see how innovators would test their products within a certain incubation program, within, with a certain incubator, with the necessary technical infrastructural support to enable them get the innovations to the market. So how would I then describe a regulatory sandbox? I would describe it in a simplistic manner, very simple, outlined, is as a safe, regulatory environment. Why regulatory? Because it is uh, a, a program which is undertaken by the regulator, where the normal heavy capital market regulation and the supervisory requirements are relaxed to enable the innovator to test out the application for a limited time under the supervisors or regulators oversight to enable them to actually build up uh, minimum viable products which they can actually deploy to the market. So then we we'll, we'll, we'll in simple terms talk about a safe regulatory environment for testing innovations. And then of course there are other technical definitions which uh, can interest uh, the scholars and other policymakers in the room uh, by uh, there's a good study done by the financial sector deepening uh, and seek up uh, on this uh, on, on this particular work around regulatory sandboxes. We launched our regulatory sandbox May 2019 after the board of the Capital Markets Authority found it fit that this is the right time that we as authority would go forward to have a structured manner of fostering innovation in the regulatory sandbox. So it has been over a year throughout our journey and I think this today is a good day for us to just out what uh, this entails. If you are in an innovator within uh, in today's uh, forum, you would go straight to our website www.cma.go.ke uh, and log in on our website CMA Kenya, and in it you find the eligibility requirements 
uh, inside the, the, the regulatory sandbox policy guidance note, you find uh, an application form. Now, under that application form, it details out the key eligibility requirements for admission. Uh, this would entail, are you, are you a company? Do you have a, a, an idea? Uh, what documentation that you will need? Uh, you will need to submit to us uh, if it is your director details, the company details, your CVs, for example, your business plan, your business model description. Have you figured out your idea? What's your test plan? What are your test objectives for this sandbox text? What are, what are the expected test outcomes? Have you written out a proper risk management plan? Have you identified all the risks that are attendant to your innovation? Then, one of the key things we look at, have you figured out what are the key regulatory reliefs or safeguards? Or what sections of the capital markets laws would infringe upon you successfully carrying out your innovation in the capital markets? And then we would then ask the innovator, have you figured out a, 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 an exit plan out once you are done with your, with your test uh, period? So these are the key highlights of what we ask for. Uh, the form is available on our website, but we can uh, take on discussions on the nitty gritties uh, on, on, on the same. So as we speak today, we have, uh, we have uh, Belfix, which is testing out a KYC blockchain-based solution. We have Forefront Management testing out a robot advisory solution. We have Innova testing out a data analytics tool. We have people uh, testing out a blockchain-based debenture issuance uh, uh, solution. And then we have uh, the Central Depository and Settlement Co Corporation, one of our intermediaries, a licensed uh, depository, uh, testing out a securities and lending uh, application. And then we have uh, another firm which elected to uh, test out its own innovation in confidence. And we provide this option to you innovators, wherever you are around the globe. If you have an application and you feel in your view that you would want not to hold yourself out in confidence until you have fully tested out your application, then we welcome you to actually come and play within the sandbox. So, in a brief overview, I will then start out by discussing about our successes. And the most recent success is the possession. Possession was admitted last year to test a crowdfunding, securities-based crowdfunding, and specifically debt crowdfunding. So under that, they would issue out, uh, call out partners, investors to invest in specific debentures of small and medium term, medium enterprises. And that test outcome was positive and was a success. And upon the ex exit, we issued them with a no objection letter subject to some few conditions, which include them meeting the ongoing compliance and reporting obligations and also us instituting the necessary supervisory framework for them to continue undertaking um, their business as a crowdfunding platform. Now, you will note for this particular case, we do not have a crowdfunding regulations, but we have the authority made the firm decision to, in the interim, issue out no objection letters, then as a precursor to the full uh, development of the applicable crowdfunding regulations or crowdfunding guideline to police the crowdfunding activities in Kenya. And so when we look at this particular case study, we take this as a great success, even in terms of us fast tracking uh, the innovation straight to the market in view of even in circumstances where we do not have the appropriate regulatory framework. And I think this is a welcome note to even uh, innovators uh, that uh, who may be interested to play in the CMA regulatory sandbox that we will find within our framework, our regulatory framework, uh, ways of accommodating new innovations and also facilitating new innovations to get to the market in good time. So there are many other trends you will see that we have observed during uh, the past one year. There is a growing interest by foreign firms uh, playing into the sandbox. Belfix, for example, is, is a foreign firm headquartered out of Kenya. Our people is also out of Kenya. Though with the local incorporation, the, 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 the parent companies are companies that are saving out of Kenya. So we are seeing both out of, so this 
more or less would give us that around 40% of the farms that we have admitted are farms which outside of Kenya, which shows the growing interest among from among other countries around the ESC region, Africa, and also globally, firms interested in coming out to test out the applications within our regulatory sandbox. This is a positive note that points to the facilitative nature of uh, the capital markets uh, regulator, our capital markets authority of Kenya, to see that all kinds of firms, irrespective of their jurisdiction, would actually come out and play within the regulatory sandbox. We also have a growing number of incumbents uh who have been tested in the sandbox we have admitted uh a licensed intermediary uh that is a cdsc to actually play out and also forfeit management is owned by one of our uh intermediaries in the market so also showing that there's growing interest among even incumbents to actually come to uh, the sandbox and test out the innovations one of the key trends that we also observe is uh blockchain based applications that we have uh, seen around the inno innovation by belfix and uh, by people the application of blockchain uh, not only uh, in data management in kyc but also growingly that there are also interest around securitization uh initial coin offerings and tokenization one of the key positive trends uh that really warms my heart is that there's a, a, a growing focus on having more more or less retail investor particip participation in the capital markets this more or less would meet the financial inclusion goals that we have as an authority so we have innovators who are trying to see how can we grow out uh, more or less more ordinary kenyans how can they participate in the capital markets how can they participate in the investment opportunities that lie in the market so these are the four key uh, themes among other subtle ones uh, that, 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 that we have around Sandbox. And, and I think these are very positive trends that we see and that the authority welcomes in view of the role that will, they will play in market deepening and market uh, development. Now, the re regulator finds himself at a very hard spot, trying to balance between our mandates and also fostering innovation. So throughout our journey, we have had challenges, but in these challenges, we also see opportunities. So we have always tried try to strike at a balance between uh, and taking our securities oversight and supervis supervisory while trying to see how we can foster innovation. There are constraints around regulation in terms of regulatory clarity, where we do not have frameworks, for example, on around tokenization, around uh, crowdfunding, for example, or where we have regulatory hindrances. And we have, uh, as a regulator, seen the opportunity in maintaining a more or less a regulatory flexibility stance to accommodate whatever innovation that comes to us for, for, the, for the overall aim of market deepening. Both the regulator and the innovators face resource constraints. There are resource constraints in regards to the capacity, for example, of uh, the sandbox, the capacity for us to undertake our awareness programs, the capacity sometimes in getting the right um, uh, expertise to to actually uh, help us out when you're looking at these innovations, and also expertise that also innovators also would also find a bit more costly. Uh, for example, cyber security uh, consultancies are very pricey at uh, this side of uh, uh, the this side of the Sahara then the sufficiency of the sandbox you know uh, we have been asking ourselves so what more can we do uh, around uh, the regulatory sandbox do we have more officers do we have dedicated uh, officers to this do we need an innovation office for example what other regulatory approaches what other regulatory mechanisms can we blend in to support or arrangements can we make to support our current uh, regulatory sandbox uh, framework and then as we think about innovation, innovation keeps on changing. The dynamic nature of uh, innovation, especially with demand from the market. What we knew about crypto assets in the past two years has been changing. We now have new phenomena around crypto assets. We have the likes of stable coins, for example. And all this phenomena shows that the regulator on its own learning curve 
has to match up with the innovation that is coming up from the market. While it then would seem sometimes as an in, as, as a challenge for us, we take it up as a challenge, and so we see the opportunity that we can that we can match up to what and be alive to the market realities in view of the innovation that is coming off from the market. For innovators, what we in our conversations with innovators continuously, we have been emphasizing on them uh, having a better problem understanding, a better problem conceptualization. Technology in itself is not an end in itself. Technology has to meet particular uh, business cases. There are particular solutions which are demanded uh, in the market. So technology then has to solve these particular issues in the market. For example, is, is it an issue of uh, financial inclusion? So then what kind of uh, business model or tech application would actually suffice in that case? We have also been engaging our innovators and also applicants on matters risk management to have a better view of all the risks to better identify risk and also identify the, the requisite uh, risk mitigation measures around uh, their particular applications. And COVID uh, has shown us that there is a need to have flexibility around the, our te the test plans that are sent to us by innovators. So innovators are encouraged to, in view of even unforeseen circumstances, in view of uh, a different uh, operational context or, or test uh, context to actually have some dynamism, be flexible around the test plans, around the test objectives, around the test outcomes. And then a very key thing is for firms to have very clear, to have clarity around the exit game. Firms are encouraged to actually look at what will happen if, for example, their test is not successful. And if the test is successful, as we hope all tests to be successful, is to actually see how the actual roll out and that, that clarity, that lag, uh, sometimes would present a challenge in our, in our view. What next for the regulator as we discuss, as we come to the penultimate end of my presentation today? We're looking at ways of redesigning the, the sandbox to better make it facilitative, to better serve the needs of you, the market, you, the policy makers, to better also share with us your lessons. We want to focus on regulatory clarity, on issues which are outstanding going forward. We want to look at ways of how we can fast track admissions, uh, particularly both in a local and the international context. But then the overall aim is to, we are always asking ourselves is that will the innovations that come into the regulatory sandbox have an impact on the ordinary Kenyan's life? Will it make the each or the investing public public's life better? Will investors be more financially included? So these are the key questions that we are asking out our innovators. Like, what is the impact of your solution? What do you see? Does this have an element of market deepening? Will this deepen the market? Will this grow the market? Will this bring more investors to Kenya? So we are not operating in a vacuum. The regulatory sandbox is. Uh, has clarity around our work uh, in deepening uh, the cap Kenyan capital markets and growing uh, the capital markets. And also the overall aim, aim of contributing to economic growth and development uh, in Kenya. So in, 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 in our entry, uh, the, the last year we have seen growing discussions around alternative finance. So you have alternative, alternative capital raising instrumentation or use of different types of models in the capital markets. You have the use of initial coin offerings, for example, where innovators, SMEs, startups are using crypto to fundraise. So we're looking at how this uh, uh, works, the, 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 the tokenization of, uh, of, 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 of real life assets, for example. We're looking at how this will play within this kind of environment. Then we're looking at financial inclusion, capital market specific financial inclusion. How do we bring more people, retail investors? How do we engage? How do we deepen the financial inclusion agenda in Kenya through uh, fintech? The regulator also is has structured out its own internal uh, organ to try to look at how then do we have uh, teams looking around regtech? 
How can the regulator, or through the regulatory sandbox, how can we have uh, innovators playing out, trying out different business models, different, different types of solutions to enable the regulator to meet its uh, regulatory and supervisory goals? I think that will suffice for our one year uh, work. I want to sincerely thank you for your kind attention. I will then open the floor for your questions on, on the comments, feedback on this. I will leave my contact for those who would want to reach out on my presentation. Thank you very much again for the organizers for having us. We look forward to hearing from you, uh, fellow, uh, fellow, fellow practitioners and fellow policy makers and also innovators uh, around the globe and in Africa. Thank you very much. Keep safe. Uh, I hope to see you soon. Thank you.